Hey guys, what's going on? Rico Garcia here, and today we're gonna to be talking about mold testing and some of the equipment that is necessary in order for a mold assessor to determine whether or not you have mold in your property. So I figured that today would be a really exciting video. That way, if you, the consumer, uh, is gonna be getting some mold testing and you start seeing all of this funky stuff being pulled out, at least you'll know uh, why it's there and what its function is. So let's just jump right into the video. Hey guys, what's going on? Rico Garcia here, founder of EcoTech Pro. Um, and today, we're, like I said, we're gonna be talking about uh, mold testing and some of the equipment and some of the tools that a mold assessor typically uses in order to determine uh, the quantities of mold in a property and everything that he needs in order to go ahead and provide a good protocol uh, for a remediation company to uh, then go in and actually go ahead and do the physical removal and the remediation in that property. So there's a couple of different ways that people do uh, mold testing, right? But as a general rule of thumb, um, one of the most popular ways is to take an air sample, right? Now here, what I currently have is what's called an aerosol, right? Which essentially is just a small little cassette. It's got a serial number, so that way we know exactly um, that this has only been used once, and once it gets sent off to the third party lab, um, it's got, it comes back with what's called a chain of custody, right? So we know exactly uh, where this test was taken and everything is documented along the way. Now, essentially all this is, this gets hooked up to a pump, which as a matter of fact, I'll go ahead and I'll show you here uh, on my screen. Uh, it can be hooked up to a old school pump like this, or um, typically what you'll see is something like this or some sort of variation of a pump like that. And as you can see on the screen, you can see that this little cassette sits right on top and all it's really doing is it's sucking air from one end and um, the other end is just open so that way the ambient air is getting in, right? So depending on the cassette that you use and depending on how they do their testing, sometimes they'll go ahead and suck air for about 15 minutes or something along those lines. And uh, yeah, that's basically what they, the, the go-to tool is, is the indoor air quality, right? However, indoor air quality, especially using these cassettes, isn't an end-all be-all. This is a little snapshot in time, right? So therefore, sometimes you can visually identify uh, what you believe to be mold, but it may not pop up in the mold sample or in the air sample. So it's really important that the assessor goes in and he takes a physical sample of the location. Now, there are uh, bulk samples, which is basically cutting out a piece, you bag it, and then you send it off to a lab. Most, for the most part, most assessors really don't do that. First of all, it's a little bit too invasive uh, for the purposes of what they need, and there's just better ways to go about it, right, without ripping holes in uh, your home or in your business. So, the first one that is used is typically a uh, swab, right? And if you look here on the screen, you will see. So if you look here on the screen, what you will see is what's called a swab in the industry, right? Which essentially, for all intents and purposes, is a glorified Q-tip, right? And essentially what the, what the whole thinking is, is you go ahead and smudge that up against the wall and there's gonna be, if there's any contaminated material, in this particular case, mold, it's just gonna kind of be stuck to that swab. They go ahead and put it in this little holder and then ship that off to the third party lab, in which case a couple of days from then, you will go ahead and get those results back. As a general rule of thumb, they most mold assessors only use this for pre-testing in order to determine the uh, indoor air quality and the remediation protocol. As a general rule of thumb, they don't use swabs for post-verification clearance 
unless there's something really obvious and the mold remediator really didn't do his job properly or there's something um, in question, then they may swab an area. But as a general rule, they typically just do a, an air sample, something like this um, on the post-verification clearance. Now, less popular, uh, and as you can see here on the screen, is bio tape, right? And again, it's kind of the same type of scenario. Essentially, it's just sticky tape that you put up against the surface, you peel it back, close it up, ship it off to the lab, and then depending on what was stuck to the um, sticky surface of the tape, that's gonna determine, they're gonna look at all of that and uh, determine the kind of mold that's in the property, the quantities and things along those lines. And of course, like I mentioned before, the very last type of sampling that's done is typically a bulk sample, which essentially is just cutting out whatever piece of material, uh, whether that be carpet or drywall or uh, something along those lines. But most mold assessors kind of stay away from that because again, it's just really not necessary. There's lots of other ways between the air sample, the bio tape, the swabs, uh, and everything else that they use in order to come up with a good determination and a good protocol as to uh, you know how to get rid of this mold, right? Some of the other tools that people use in the business, whether they're a mold assessor or a uh, mold remediation uh, technician, is uh, something along these lines, right? This is a FLIR MR277, and uh, if you take a look here on my screen, uh, this is basically what it is, and it's pretty much an all-in-one device, right? You've got your non-invasive um, moisture meter. You can go ahead and take your temperature, your relative humidity, everything there, as well as a very good, this particular one has a very good, for, for what it is, considering that it's an all-in-one, a very good uh, thermal imaging camera as well. So of course, this is something that assessors and mold remediators use quite quite a lot in order to kind of scope the the job site right from the beginning, figure out where what areas of the walls or baseboards or flooring or ceiling um, have moisture and also with the infrared uh, being in this all-in-one tool really helps sometimes to identify areas in question so that way it saves a lot of time instead of poking around and, and, and trying to gauge every single square inch of the wall, you can just put on the camera and see if you get any temperature differentials uh, with, with the thermal imaging camera. Uh, something to be said about thermal imaging cameras um, that a lot of people don't know, most people think that it's like x-ray vision and nothing could be further from the truth, right? It doesn't even really pick up water. Like that's not what the thermal imaging is supposed to do. What it does is it picks up temperature differentials uh, on surfaces. So if if you have cold water, let's say that it's a cold water leak um, that's running down your wall, there should be a temperature differential between the dry portion of the wall and the wet portion of the wall. Either way, it's a fantastic tool. And of course, with the moisture meter uh, in the back, it really helps. Some of the other tools that people use, typically what I do is I always have this boy uh, in the truck with me. Um, and then I get some, some, I also have some cheaper backups uh, because again, why not? You never know. Sometimes the battery might die on that or you're in a crunch or you feel that you're not getting a good reading. Um, so I have a couple of extra ones. Uh, this is like a general uh, one that you can, anybody can get at Home Depot. And then here's another one, Klein Tools. Again, this is like 30 or 40 bucks. Um, and it's not something that we use daily, but it is always in the truck as a backup in case you're in a box mind and we really need it. So between the aerosols, the swabs, the biotape, the thermal imaging, uh, the moisture meters, and all the other tools uh, that are needed, pretty much that's what you're going to see uh, a mold remediation, or I'm sorry, a mold assessor typically walking to the home with. Um, some of them have a little bit of fancier gear uh, when it comes down to thermal imaging cameras. They may have something like uh, here on the screen, uh, which is more of a handheld, independent uh, thermal imaging camera, uh, so, and tons of other uh, variations of uh, their moisture meters, but for all intents and purposes, it really boils down to the same set of tools that are used in the industry to kind of come up with a protocol.
So yeah, guys, so there you have it. Those are the tools of the trade. There's gonna be some variations from time to time with regards to what you may see. But as a general rule of thumb, this pretty much has everybody covered in order to write up a protocol. So I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you haven't done so already, make sure that you subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell. That way you know once we go ahead and drop a new video each and every week, or at least we're trying to make it once each and every week. Uh, and until the next time, I'll see you guys soon. Bye.